This is the eighth video in my series on rheumatology and today's topic is acute phase reactants, proteins that increase in the plasma when you have an inflammation. And let's get started. These are my previous rheumatology videos. Go to my playlist called Rheumatology and please save it. Come on guys, these videos are just awesome. Rheumatological diseases are divided into non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Why does that matter? Because septic arthritis could be an emergency. Okay, so if you confuse septic arthritis, which is inflammatory, with anything here which is less severe and less urgent, the patient can die. Let's compare between non-inflammatory arthritis such as osteoarthritis and inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid arthritis. Here in non-inflammatory there are no cardinal signs of inflammation. In inflammatory it's inflammatory so we have cardinal signs of inflammation which are redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Here we have asymmetrical arthritis which means it affects right knee and left knee not at the same rate. One of them will get arthritis before the other. One of them will have a more severe arthritis than the other. It's asymmetrical. Why is that? Because it's mechanical. It's wear and tear. And as the tires in your car, they don't wear out at the same rate. Because the process is mechanical and completely random. Here, on the other hand, the inflammatory, such as rheumatoid, is asymmetrical arthritis. The right knee and the left knee are affected at the same rate. They are both equally bad. Why? Because we have the same crazy O2 antibodies called rheumatoid factors floating in the serum affecting both the right and the left knee equally. Non-inflammatory arthritis is worse in the evening because again, more wear and tear throughout the day. You are so tired at the evening. Here, inflammatory, it's worse in the morning. And as the day progresses, you're washing out the inflammatory debris and you feel better. In non-inflammatory arthritis, those acute phase reactants are within normal limit because there is no inflammation. Here when you have inflammation, ESR and C-reactive protein will be high. Huge difference. Today's topic is these acute phase reactants. Before we continue, I have great news for you. I have 50 hematology cases. Yes, 50. And here is the trick. You will never answer the 50 correctly. You will get at least like three, four, five or more wrong. Guaranteed. So go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. These cases are just awesome and they are really, some of them are really hard. You will enjoy them. Even after watching my glorious playlist on hematology, you will still get several questions wrong, which is completely normal. Acute phase reactants, they are proteins. No wonder anything that's active in your body is made of protein. Some of them are proteins, some of them are peptides. I don't care, I call them proteins. They are secreted by the liver. Yeah, like it's a protein secreted by the liver. Like almost anything in your body is synthesized and secreted by the liver. They are acute phase reactant. By acute phase, we mean inflammation. So they increase their level in plasma in cases of inflammation and they decrease when there's no inflammation or there was an inflammation that's now cured, it's now gone, they go back and decrease. During inflammation, you have the cardinal signs of inflammation. As you know, you can have fever, leukocytosis, interleukins, because interleukins are called interleukin. I-N means what? Means protein. How about Luke? Luke are the white blood cells, the leukocytes. Inter is like the internet, in between. So the interleukins are the internet of the white blood cells. It's their method of communication. When there are a lot of white blood cells, there will be lots of interleukin. They use it in communication. The liver will sense increased interleukin and will secrete those acute phase reactants for a reason. Everything is for a reason. First, we have to differentiate between two types of acute phase reactants. We have the positives and the negatives. The positive, because they increase in case of inflammation, and the negatives, their plasma level decreases in inflammation. Who does both of them? When you are in doubt, blame the liver. 
Why does the liver do that? Why does the liver decrease some of those and increase some of those? Again, it's for a reason. I'll tell you soon. Let's talk about the positive acute phase reactants. They increase their plasma level in inflammation. So if you have inflammation and you're measuring their level in the plasma, it's going to be high. Why? They help the immune system. What else? They fight microbes by increasing vascular permeability. Why is that? Because here is your nice blood vessels and the bacteria is away from the blood vessel. It's here in the tissue. Nasty, ugly bacteria. And here are our military, the white blood cells. And these white blood cells want to fight the bacteria, but the bacteria is outside. So let's increase the vessel permeability so that these nice heroes can exit the blood vessel, go into the tissue and destroy these nasty bacteria. It's called increased vascular permeability, which is good because they fight bacteria. And it's also not that good because you will have pus. Pus is nothing but increased vascular permeability. We call it the exudate, not the transudate. And the, by the way, the exudate is non-pitting. So it's non-pitting edema. It doesn't pit. What else? These positive acute phase reactants will trap microbes in local blood clots, which is really cute. So here's your blood vessel. Let's say that you got some back to nasty bacteria here. So let's do this. You have a nasty bacteria here. Now the platelets are so cute. Those nice platelets. I'm going to come here, form a platelet plug, bring those fibrin fibers to form a meshwork trap the red blood cells and now the bacteria is trapped okay go to hell this is really brilliant examples of positive acute phase reactants which increase in cases of inflammation the c-reactive protein absolutely complement factors yep coagulation factors and von willebrand or von willebrand factor which traps microbes in local blood clots. That's why we need coagulation factors. So fibrinogen is one of the acute phase reactants. When you have an inflammation, fibrinogen level can be high. Why? To form a clot. Alpha-2 microglobulin, plasminogen activator inhibitor. It inhibits the activation of plasminogen. Why is that helpful? To prevent clot degradation so that we can preserve the clot to trap the microbes. Ferritin is a famous acute phase reactant. And hepcidin, remember anemia of chronic disease, which is also known as anemia of what? Of inflammation. Hello. Because one of the reasons or one of the methods bacteria can thrive is by eating your iron. And the tissue or your body is very brilliant. It will hide this iron in tissues away from the bacteria. So ferritin will be high, hepcidin will be high. Those guys will hide the iron here. And the iron which is stored is called ferritin. I-N, protein, and fer means iron. That's why we have ferrin, ferric and ferrous and stuff like that. Ceruloplasmin, remember ceruloplasmin level in Wilson disease. Is it high or low in Wilson disease? Let me know in the comments. Haptoglobin, remember, hemolysis, hemolytic anemia, has decreased level of haptoglobin because it's consumed. Alpha-1 antitrypsin, remember, emphysema. Okay, negative acute phase reactants. I can understand positive acute phase reactants. I can understand that you need those pro-inflammation mediators in your body to fight microbes. But why the frick would you decrease the level of other proteins, and we call them negative APRs. And the reason is simple. The liver follows grandma's rule of handling money. The liver is a saver, is very frugal. In inflammation, the liver has a vested interest in producing positive acute phase reactants. Okay, I can understand that. But I have a limited number of resources, hashtag economics, and I have limited amount of amino acids. So I'm either going to use them on the negative or on the positive. Since I need the positive, so let's not produce negatives for a while and produce positives by using all of the amino acids in store. Let's decrease secretion of the negatives and increase the positive. Example of the negatives, albumin, transferrin, and antithrombin. Antithrombin, whoa, that makes perfect sense. Why? Because we need thrombosis 
to trap the microbes. So let's decrease the level of antithrombin, go to hell, we don't need you right now. Let's compare between ESR and CRP. ESR is not actually an acute phase reactant, it's not secreted by the liver, it's produced in the lab, but it's, in a sense, it's kind of the same as CRP, it's an acute phase reactant, increase in inflammation, decrease after a cure of the inflammation, so we can consider it, so to speak, as a acute phase reactant. So, ESR increase in the inflammation, absolutely. How about the C-reactive protein, increase in inflammation? Is there a difference? Yep. ESR depends on fibrinogen. The half-life of fibrinogen is seven days, which means ESR may remain high even after resolution of the infection. Let's make it easier for you. Let's say there's day one, and day one, you got an inflammation, okay? Now the ESR is high. Why the ESR is high? Because of fibrinogen. But fibrinogen will remain in your blood for about seven days. Let's say that you cured your inflammation on day three and the doctor measures the ESR on day five. The doctor might assume, hmm, I gave this guy medicine, but yet ESR is still high. Maybe the medicine is not working. No, doctor, you're foolish. The fibrinogen half-life is seven days. You have correctly cured the inflammation but actually ESR is gonna be high until we get rid of the fibrinogen and bring the ESR back to normal after seven days. So how can the doctor verify that he did a great job? Use the CRP, why? The half-life is seven hours. CRP rises rapidly and falls rapidly when you remove the inflammation. So when you have an inflammation, it goes up very quickly. When you remove the inflammation because you're a great doctor, it falls back rapidly. So to monitor the response to treatment, it's better to use CRP. We usually use both, but when you have an inflammation and you cure the inflammation and then you measure both ESR and CRP, ESR is still high, CRP is back to normal, you did a great job, the inflammation is gone, it's just the half-life, some just jargon that the lab technicians know about. So which one is better? or which one is more flexible and faster, the CRP. And the mnemonic is, it's called C-reactive protein. It's more flexible, it's reactive. This is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. It's a sediment, it's hard, core, ugly, uh, brain dead saying that it's not flexible. ESR is a sedimentation, closed-minded. This one is reactive. It can't get better than that. If you'd like to get all of my 50 hematology cases, go to patreon.com forward slash metacosis. Also, you'll get all of my notes. You can download, print, and enjoy. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I release a new video. Thank you so much for watching. What am I doing with my life?